Reagan began with a poignant description of the British surrender at Yorktown. The morning of the surrender must have been very much like this one today. The first real chill of autumn was in the air. The trees were turning brilliant with the hues of red and gold and brown. The sky was bright and clear. Quiet had finally returned to this lovely countryside. How strange the silence must have seemed after the thundering violence of war. And then the silence was broken by a muffled beat of British drums covered with black handkerchiefs as the Redcoats marched to surrender. The pageantry was spectacular. The French in their spotless white uniforms lined one side of the road. The ragged Continentals were brown and dreary on the other side. The journals of those who were present mentioned that the Americans stood every bit as straight and equally as proud as any army could. They had on that day a military bearing that was not to be outdone by their comrades in white and blue, nor by King George's men in their brilliant red. As the British marched between the Allied armies to the field of surrender, tears streamed down many of their faces. Their musicians played a tune popular in England at the time. Yes, the world turned upside down. And that's just what the colonists had done. Mr. Reagan also spoke on the meaning of liberty and the need for a strong defense to ensure that liberty. Of equal concern to me is the uncertainty some seem to have about the need for a strong American defense. Now that is a proper task for the national government. Military inferiority does not avoid a conflict. It only invites one and then ensures defeat. We have been trusted with freedom. We have been trusted with freedom and must ensure it for our children and for their children. We're rebuilding our defenses so that our sons and daughters never need to be sent to war. band of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. The final event of the day was the Grand Military Review. 13 military bands and 148 recreated Revolutionary War military units, numbering more than 5,000 troops, had gathered to celebrate America's victory at Yorktown. French, commanded by Michael Vaquer, with the recreated units Regiment de Foire, Regiment d'Auxerre, Regiment Royal du Pont, Regiment de la Lusienne, Regiment de saint Regiment Verbonnet, Regiment Soissonnet, and First New Hampshire.
uniform flag, the Northern Battalion, under the command of George Woodbridge, honoring the following 18th century units. Delaware Light Infantry, Light Infantry Company of the 2nd Maryland, the 10th Massachusetts, Light Company of the New Jersey Light Infantry, Barbers New Jersey Light Infantry, the Corps of Light Infantry, 5th Virginia Light Infantry, 10th Virginia Light Infantry, 3rd Pennsylvania Light Infantry, the 2nd New York, the Reynolds Company of the 3rd New York, and the 3rd New York, the 3rd New Jersey Blues, Commander-in-Chief's Guard, and the 13th Pennsylvania. 13th Regiment, Albany County Militia. Crockett's Western Battalion, Virginia State Forces. 1st Battalion, Westmoreland County Militia. Rawlings Rifles. Hosington's New York Rangers. Essex County Regiment. Hands, 1st Pennsylvania. Luggage Ranger Company. Donegal Rangers. Monongahela Rangers. Thompson's Rifle Battalion, Donald's Company. Dan Morgan's Rifle of Virginia. Thompson's Rifle Battalion, Hendricks Company, and Morgan's First Rifle Company. Some of these units had retraced the march of the Allied American and French armies all the way from Rhode Island. America's victory celebration is over. The participants disperse, but the memory and significance of this day will not be soon forgotten. A new fighting ship will be named for this Battle of Yorktown to remind us that liberty cannot be assumed. We must be forever ready to defend it.